Hi kids, welcome to Terry on Tuesday. Hi kids, welcome to Terry on Tuesday and this uh, kind of back to normal. We're, uh, we're shooting on a Sunday afternoon um, here in the kitchen of creation, which is an absolute bomb site. Um, this is probably going to be the penultimate uh, and or thingy build video where uh, I have got about 10 days left to get this finished because I have a friend who thankfully stepped up to the plate and is offering to take the finished item to London for me to hand over to Mr. C uh, where we will hopefully get some pictures of it at Star Wars Celebration. So look out for those in a future video. Uh, in the meantime, I've got a gadget thing in the corner. Look at that. that, that it's like share, yeah, subscribe thing. Uh, so yeah, like, share, and subscribe would be cool. Uh, I know no one shares my videos, actually. Um, I, I'd be happy with a like, to be honest. Uh, subs are good, though. Subs. Subscribe. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, so let's show you what we've done from uh, last week's video, okay? First off, the spindly legs. Um, as you can see, they're all connected. The box now connected to the first bits I made. Uh, I have re-sanded and re-primed everything with uh, the watered down PVA, as I promised. Um, you will notice that I have actually now included the inset shape on both sides of all of these, which is very hard to do. I had to cut them out. In fact, let's cut to some stills. So I basically cut myself out a shape of cardboard, which is the right size, traced that onto the uh, piece, scraped around it with a scalpel, and very, very carefully, because there's curves, cut around it, pushed it in about three or four millimeters, and then re-glued it with some super glue. Now, that is uh, looking much better. And in my defense, um, uh, it, you know, in, in the interest of honesty, this detail, as you can see here, all this, these lines should really be pushed in like that. But this would take me maybe half an hour to an hour each one. Ooh, I've got a sticky thing there. Um, yeah, it would just take me too long. I don't have the time now. I've got to get this uh, ready to go because if it's not finished, uh, not in any way, shape, you know, ready to go, uh, I've you know, there's no point in making it. So anyway, this detail will be scored and left as it is there. And I've done that on both sides on every leg. And I'm quite happy about the way they've turned out. Uh, yesterday, I, like I say, I got the watered down PVA on the go. And all of these have been primed with two coats. So I'm hoping they take the paint well. Uh, there's another two. You can't see them, but we shall move the camera. Uh, there's another two on the floor there. And let's get the next pieces out as well. Alrighty, so I can't remember if I uh, told you about this last week. Um, these are the, the interstitial legs that go inside the main Y. And um, they also hold a spindly leg too. Um, but uh, I have primed these and sanded them nicely now. So hopefully the sandering and filling will make it look a lot smoother once it's painted. Um, but I was, as I was fitting them, I went through my reference photos and realized something a little bit and I didn't want to let it go. As you will notice, this, these triangles here, uh, this section comes down at an angle. Uh, not only this piece on the end that I did last week, but this piece goes on an angle as well. Uh, and I couldn't let that go. I didn't want to let that go straight. Um, so I, as you can see, I cut into the and the size of this angle, this triangle is what I actually cut out. I cut another slice of this out on both sides and then bent it down, filled the, the gap in the middle that I had to cut a gap uh, and glued it. Now, in all honesty, I think that's not steep enough. I think it should be even more of a, an angle. Um, but I don't want to interfere with the design too much because it will mess things up when it's connected to the the main shape. Uh, so anyway, these have been primed now with one coat. So while it's still light and reasonably dry and windy out there, I might give it another coat, uh, all three of them. 
Now let's talk about the main Y shape. Okay, this is the infamous Y shape. And as you can see, it's pretty light considering how big it is. It's easily a meter across, um, but it looks different, doesn't it? And I'll show you why. Why? <laughs> okay, so I went and bought some red EVA foam, which was five millimeters in thickness uh, to do all this detail. Um, now let's cut to a bit of footage showing how I did that. I bought six sheets of lovely red five millimeter EVA foam. Uh, these are squares, not A4, but they're squares. Why did I buy red? Because it's about two pounds cheaper than grey or black or white. Don't ask me why. Doesn't matter. It's going to be painted. Let's get the cheaper stuff. Saved me about ten pounds there. So anyway, I've got this. And I need to mark out cardboard templates for one of the, well, for all three of these. Uh, the reason I want to do cardboard templates first is because if I go straight to foam, if I make one mistake, I'm in trouble. So I put down pieces of uh, cardboard, as you can see, exactly the same size, and then worked out how much I needed to cut off. I actually taped these to the Y shape downstairs and marked off what they should look like. So all three together will go on the front of the Y shape. So once I've cut the pieces to match the cardboard, then we mark the detail out. So let's bring the paper back in. Um, as you can see, this is, uh, we'll go for, go with the, the Y shape. Uh, there we go. So yeah, we've got two squares at the top and two squares at the bottom, but they actually go down to match the, the curve of the, the center joint, like so. So mark them all out as best I can. This is our template. Then I carefully cut them all out. It's very blue Peter this, isn't it? There we go. So there's our, our template, which we put onto a piece of the foam. Uh, I even marked the foam out with a biro because, uh, again, I just want it to be perfecto mundo. So once it's marked out, then I get the scalpel and cut round these and pop these out. It's very hard to do the curves on the corners, but we're doing okay so far. So I can I can use these for other stuff. So now we have uh, the first one of our five millimeter deep uh, pieces. So there's one here and I haven't done the other two, but basically it's going to be something like that. If that is number two, no, that isn't number two. Got to get these right because they don't, they're not, or you'd think they'd be all exactly the same shape, but they aren't because of the shape of the thingy. There we go. I think that's about right. So as you can see, I've done the first one, two more to go. Uh, these will make a proper circle and allow me to put something in the middle for the, the middle pivot. And then I've got to do slightly different ones with only two squares on for the, the separate legs. So wish me luck. Right, Thursday morning. Uh, last night I glued all the, uh, the red bits on and they fit pretty sweet. And then I had an idea. Uh, some of these recesses have seams visible behind them. The ones that you see covered already have very bad seams. But I thought, why not make use of the green two millimeter foam by cutting out the shapes that I need? For example, once I cut out the shape for this one in green, it'll pop in there. It'll go down flat, glue all the way around, and it completely hides a horrible seam. Once it's all sprayed the one color, it will look fine. And these are taking almost no time at all to do. So let's get on with that this morning and then starting the red pieces for the other three legs. Now I made a stack of these pieces. Uh, I've actually scored them, which you can't really see. They should be a slightly better, like the scalpel there actually, should be a kind of ridges. They are scored. It is possible to see some lines if you look really closely with a microscope. Um, but right now they need to go on, on there, uh, either side of each 
leg or whatever you want to call it. And I've put a block of spare foam in the middle with a piece of tape on it. The tape is so when I cover this entire thing in PVA, I can peel this tape off and have an unprimed bit of foam to glue the centre greebly on. Here's the centre greebly. It's basically scratch built. It's made from a part of a fire, uh, fire detector, smoke detector. And <laughs> the triangular thing in the middle or the Y-shaped thing in the middle is one of those little tables from a pizza. So I've stuck a piece of foam on the inside as well. So that will, because there's a, there's a lip on this, on this piece actually. So that will go nicely onto there like that. And it'll be painted black anyway, so it doesn't matter what details on there. It's not screen accurate, but that's how I roll. So as you can see, um, I think that works reasonably well. Um, it's got a nice smooth finish. Uh, so putting the green two millimeter foam in there does cover a, a multitude of sins and bad seams, etc. So I'm hoping that will work nicely. And also there's a little bit of detail on the sides, these lines. Admittedly, I think there should be more lines down here and in the middle and all the way around. But again, we don't really have the time to do that. Um, if I did it today, it would push everything forward a day and I need a, at least the full week to make sure this is painted properly. Um, just to make sure nothing goes wrong and it all dries really nicely in time for transit. Uh, yeah, so I have uh, been cutting holes, as you can see here and here, for the, the centre blocks. They go straight down and I mean it's not very heavy now it's got to have another three on and each leg yes has got to have that fitted inside it uh, I'm not going to do it right now with one hand that'll be a bit of a pain um, so that is going to make it heavy uh, not unbearably heavy though because as you know foam is quite light uh, now what am I doing about the reverse side not a lot um, originally my plan was maybe I should fill this uh, but I've realized that you need this hole because in order to assemble this on the day my friend Mr. C is going to have to reach inside here to get to the the pegs we'll use this pencil for the time being we basically you've got to put a peg through sorry you can't see what I'm doing into there there you go. And that's going to end up going into the side of each leg and you've got to do the same on that side. But in order, the only way you can see what you're doing is to reach in with your hand and do it like that because the leg will be in the way. Uh, and also the same goes for, which I decided yesterday, uh, see if I can move a leg or two, shake a leg as they say. Ooh. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. We'll put it the right way up. Again, this has been mostly primed. I've got to give it another coat today while it's dry. But my plan is, originally I was going to glue these in permanently. But I think, have I got the right one? Let me just check. I do have a system. Not a very good system, I'll grant you, but I do have a system. I think that's number three. Let's just check we've got number three. Where's number three? There's number three. Okay. So basically the, the tabs that I put in go into the slots. See, use the right number and the right ones go in properly. So my plan was originally to have this um, these connected permanently but it does add to the awkwardness of the shape and as it's got to be put into a car and taken to London I think I'm going to have these disconnected for now and reassembled on site so the plan uh, the easiest plan I can work out is to basically say have these disconnected let's check the weight on that it's getting heavier <laughs> uh, yeah so come out you didn't too well these tabs, you can see here, I'm going to make a hole uh, big enough for a piece of pencil or whatever to go straight through there. So when the tab goes into the main Y piece on the inside, that would go through sideways like that, preventing it from falling out. Um, it'll be quite a tight 
grip as well because foam grips dowels quite well so that is my plan um, the only other thing I can tell you about right now is plant pot uh, trays you know for putting water in or putting your plant pot in um, I bought a lot of these and the reason I bought a lot of these is I realized that on the sides of each leg holder, for want of a better word, there is a silver ring, which is part of a kind of joint. Um, so what I'm going to do is connect those to those. These will be silver, uh, and there'll be one either side. And they'll look pretty good. Uh, so what I did was actually cut a largish hole in the middle in order to fit our peg. And as you can see, that the hole in the the thing is really tight so that's going to grip it super tight but that goes in there this will be connected by wire because if i glue it it will probably fall off because it will only stick to the paint so you need to wire it to hold it in physically anyway that'll go in there both sides uh one either side so i've got 12 of them made holes in all of them and give them a light sanding to try and hold the paint uh, silver paint, so these are going to be silver with black circles interior, if I can do that. <coughs> See? Very, very strong. Very nice. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing with those. But, again, this week, or this weekend at least, I've got to get outside, move the camera a little bit. Uh, I've got to get out there while it's dry and reasonably... Uh, there's wind but no rain. It does tend to start raining about the four o'clock mark. So I've got to move. Uh, I've got some priming to do. I may have to mix up a little bit more PVA uh, because you do splash it all on and then it needs a good couple of hours to dry before I can even think about painting. So that is my plan. I've just noticed a really, really bad... That is horrible. That's like really rough. I'm going to go sand that in a sec. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can not see, as you can see now, that's basically all the pieces um, all together. Um, it, it is literally a matter of trying to race to the finish line now. Um, I'm very happy with how it's turned out, in fact. Uh, it's a quite a complicated shape, and I'm really glad that I decided to do these first in the very first video, because these, looking back, are horrible. Uh, I mean, it's the curves and the, the holding things together. Uh, but generally, I'm very happy how it's turned out. Uh, I don't know if I told you about the, the two millimeter foam detail I put on the end, which was, uh, I think I did, because I was saying that it's not meant to be an imperial cog. Um, but yes, we're going to do some more priming outside, which I'm not going to bother filming, because uh, this video is long enough. And um, I may do a test assembly. Um, oh, the one last thing. The last thing, as this is meant to be a costume of sorts, it needs to be able to be worn in the sense of it will be held on to Mr. C with straps like this so we can walk around with it on display kind of thing. Um, I haven't worked out the straps yet. I have got the straps. I know what I'm going to use. Um, and I have to sort of work it out, probably connected to these two sections here and here. Um, I think around the back of the neck from here and then something around here for just to keep it around the waist. Uh, obviously you can't wear it like that because there's going to be a block in the way. In fact, where's number three? This is number three. Let's put number three back in. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. So there's number three. So obviously there's a block in the way of each one, so it'll have to be worn something like this. And there'll be another block here, and on top of these there'll be legs. So it'll be a big, chunky monkey, um, but it will be doable. Like I say, I've worn heavier costumes than this, and this is uh, super easy, barely an inconvenience, as a wise man once said. Uh, yeah, so that's it this week. Uh, let's get number three out. Get out number three. Okay. Lots to do, uh, but although the 
inconvenience yeah. of painting things with uh, watered down PVA uh, is horrible. It still signifies it's the last stage before painting. Painting I love. Uh, I've decided that I'm not going to use spray paint on this. I'm probably going to use a tin of some kind of uh, uh, very good paint that will stick to all surfaces like a satin grey uh, because spray paint will when you're doing this on a piece you're missing the piece quite a lot and you'll waste a lot of paint and it will take me a lot of cans and cost a lot of money um, well it won't cost me a lot of money it will cost Mr. C a lot of money so I'm going to do this slightly sensible way because it's not a complicated paint job it's generally battleship grey all over um, the only thing I can remember is there is some silver here and silver on the, the plant pot lids and that's about it. Um, there aren't even any black pieces on this, uh, on this gadget. Anyway, like I said, uh, we're very close to it. So this being the penultimate video, the last video will be next week and you'll hopefully, uh, I'll try and get some footage of me painting it and we'll do a before and after. And that will be it, because it's being picked up on the 6th of April in time to get to Star Wars Celebration. Uh, so join me next week uh, when, we, when we put this sucker to bed. And with that done, it's time for a cup of coffee. Take care now. Bye bye then.